This is a brief introduction to the Latin language. In it, we will learn what inflection is and how inflection helps us to read Latin. But what does it mean to say that Latin is an inflected language? An inflected language is one that shows the relationships between words in its sentences by the changes on the endings of the words. These changes are what we call inflections. Now let's look at four short Latin sentences. The order of the words in the Latin sentences is presented in the same order that you see the words in the English translation of that sentence. As I read the Latin sentences, please pay careful attention to the endings or inflections on each of the words. Servus videt puellam. The servant sees a girl. Number two. Servus amat puellam. The servant loves the girl. Number three. Servus dat puellae florem. The servant gives the girl a flower. And number four. Puella amat servum. The girl loves the servant. Now let's take a look at the same Latin sentences rearranged. The four sentences on the left are the rearranged sentences, and the four sentences on the right are the original sentences. We can tell just by looking at the vocabulary that the sentences appear to be different. But Latin determines meaning by looking at inflections. That's what we mean by inflections determine the relationships between the words. All of the words in these sentences are related to one another. One of the words is an action. One of the words does the action, and one of the words is having something done to it. So how am I supposed to know which word is doing what thing? Sometimes vocabulary will help, but not always. Widet means to see or sees, so vocabulary helps me to understand that widet is the verb in sentence number one. Servus is servant, and Puella is girl. The sentence makes sense if I say the girl sees the servant. The sentence also makes sense if I say the servant sees the girl. But which one is right? Only the inflectional endings of the words will be able to tell us that for certain. In this sentence, because servus ends with a U-S, it is the subject of the sentence. An inflection communicates the function of the noun in a sentence. Puellam ends with A-M, and that means it's the direct object, which is just a fancy way of saying that something is happening to the girl in this sentence. Because of those inflectional endings, both sentences must say, the servant sees the girl. Now let's look at sentence number two, servus amat puellum, the servant loves the girl. That's the original sentence. The revised version on the left has puellum amat servus. Because the inflections are the same, and because I learned in sentence one that U.S. shows that the noun must be the subject, I know that servant is still the subject in sentence number two, even when it is the last word in the sentence. So sentence number two has only one new vocabulary word, amat, which means loves. Sentence number two says, both versions of it, the servant loves the girl. Now let's look at sentence number three, which has two new vocabulary words. Dot means gives, and florem means flower. 
Notice that the inflection on servus is still us, which means that it is functioning as the subject. But the inflection of girl, pueli, has changed to ae instead of am. This means that the girl is no longer receiving the action, but instead something is being given to the girl. Flower, florem, because it ends with em, and I know that em is a di direct object inflection, serves as the direct object in the sentence. So in number three, both sentences say, the servant gives the girl a flower, or the servant gives a flower to the girl. Finally, let's look at sentence number four, all of the vocabulary we have used before. But I want you to notice how the inflection on both words girl and servant have changed. Girl now ends with the letter A. This inflection communicates that it is the subject. Servant now ends with the inflection UM. This inflection tells me that servant is receiving the action or something is being done to it or it is the direct object. When I translate this sentence, number four, into English, it will say, the girl loves the servant. Let's review. When we are thinking about Latin, what is more important for us to consider? The order of the words and what they mean or the inflections on the words? If you answered B, inflection is more important than word order, you are correct. Yay! Now let's see if we can put what we've learned to the test. At the top of the screen, you see a Latin sentence with each of the inflections highlighted in blue. Poeta puellae magnas rosas dot. Because I know that Latin is able to be read because the inflections tell me how the nouns and verbs are used. I know that the original sentence says, the poet gives the girl big roses. Can you find two other sentences that say exactly the same thing, even though the order of the words is different? Feel free to pause the video and take your time finding the two sentences that mean the same as the original. If you chose sentences B and E, congratulations, you are correct. They mean the same as the original. But can you explain why these are the correct answers? Pause the video and take a moment or two to think about the answer. Jot down your answers before you press play again to hear if your explanation is correct. If your answer indicates that the sentences are the same as the original or mean the same as the original because the inflections of the sentences that you chose are the same as the inflections in the original. Fantastic! You have a basic understanding of how inflection is used to understand Latin. So let's recap. Why do we need to learn about inflection, the endings on words in a Latin sentence? Because the endings are the key to understanding any Latin text. They help us to clarify what each word in the sentence is doing or what is the function of that word within the sentence. The only step left is to learn some Latin inflections. Are you ready? Let's open up the door to the past and start learning how the Romans read, understood, and wrote their sentences.